Copyright disclaimer. You know what? I'm just gonna call it good timing. I'm ready to share. <laughs> Ready to share my love for music again. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill. This is Trying to Stand, where I try new things in pop culture because I've been living under a rock. A while ago, several audio and studio setups ago, I started listening to Lovejoy for the first time. I started by listening to some of Wilbur Soot's music. People watched, clicked, shared, liked, and encouraged me to do more. The algorithm is tricky. Like, I didn't even know until like three weeks too late that there was a new single for leading up to this EP. I just decided I'd wait till the EP anyway and just go in with no knowledge, like always. So I'm gonna be doing the full EP, Wake Up and It's Over, just listening to each song once and then looking at the lyrics and kind of breaking them down and giving my thoughts along the way. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all the good stuff, especially if you want more. I have a gaming channel in the description, Bill Chill Gaming. I'm gonna be playing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom there starting on Monday, that'll be fun. My merch store is there, thethirdbuild.com. If you wanna pick up some merch or donate to support me, you can donate here with a super thanks. All kinds of things to plug. And speaking of the description, there's also a link there to a card for uh, mental health, crisis lines, Trevor Project resources, things like that, should you or someone you know need them. They tackle some heavy stuff in a very audibly pleasing way. Let's dive in. We're starting with Portrait of a Blank Slate, the visual audio. There are a couple music videos. It happens every time. There'll probably be another one by the time this video goes up. Kindly let me know that there's a new music video in the comments. <laughs> oh, that's that good grungy rock sound I like. Like that's such a good baseline. I love listening to their stuff. Damn. Ooh. Damn. I love how like scary this feels. Like it's intense. Ah. And, and yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was prepping me musically for paints across my chest. <laughs> You're really good at creating creepy POVs. You know it me. His insecurities... Wait, you're insecure. But like, listen to that, like that rocks. Oh, they, I'm just like in this creepy person's headspace or maybe not creepy, but like overwhelming. Please, yeah, I'm like, is this person nervous or, or scary? Yeah. But it also like rocks. <laughs> Damn. Ugh. I they they just have like they just have such a way of like painting such a unsettling picture, whether it's from observation of the world around them or like building a character or a scenario, dragging you through the coals of that headspace. I really love it. I love the way it sounds. I love how much it rocks. I love illustrating and like how much I was questioning, like how's this, how's the POV of the story doing? Are you waiting because like you're, you're anxious, you're nervous, is someone showing up late and you're like grappling with some thoughts or is this like in your mind, I'm better than the other options. Why is isn't it me? And it just starts to slowly devolve into, oh yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna sit on a different bench. Don't worry about me. And the bass line was so strong and I just loved that like good distorted sound to like mix with such a warped for the POV, for the, it matches the lyrics. All those kind of red flags are there in the, in the, the lyrics, but also like the sound. I love that. I, mm, building a character in a low place and like exploring that. It's so interesting to me. Okay, let's look at the lyrics before I keep talking in a circle. He told me that much and now he's dead. Told me to kill my indulgences with a sharp blow to the temple. It's it's an aggressive defense as opposed to like, at first it's illustrated like antagonistic. I just wanted to take pictures, <laughs> like ugh. Also there's something about taking pictures, like that's, I could take a plastic camera, we could make such a pretty picture, like, and emphasizing like a plastic camera too, like it's, I don't know, like it, there's something a little extra invasive and like an extra step in that, right? Like we have computer cameras in our pockets that can also, <laughs> follow me on my socials. There's just an extra step that's just kind of unnerving. We could make such a pretty picture. Oh, so happy, oh, so happy. Like you're just building this fictitious image in your mind. I'm pretty cool once you get to know me. Establishing that you don't. Whoever the POV is speaking of in this fantasy, they don't know them. And I, I like slipping in that information like that. I like the perplexed, like this character is like describing themselves as silent, but like this lady that you're into, right? Like being so extroverted and like goes to parties all the time and makes yourself at home. Like there's something, it, it sounds like you appreciate this about the person, but then the no one knows what you came here for, I could paint her. It feels almost controlling and you could feel it musically too. Like the 
way that this person's kind of like revving their own engine, like getting themselves worked up and then like kind of blaming yourself as opposed to accepting and moving on. Like, is it because my name is boring? Like I'm just a plain person. Like it kind of uh, self-justification while also refusing to leave. I'm sorry. It's also predictable. I'm sorry. It's also predictable. I know the thing that you're apologizing for at the end isn't your, your actions. This is such a cliche. My apologies. Like it's, it's just so interesting. Like the, the character not getting it. And then the music lifting you through that headspace of not getting it. There's like a disconnect between the POV and reality. It like balances on the line of like tragic without being to me anyway, like overtly sympathetic. It does give me very e-girl trilogy vibes, like failing character. Even if it's unintentional, it illustrates how unnerving and unsettling that can be. It keeps diminishing with each line. I said, please just let me stay. Oh, just let me stay. Oh, just let me like you're getting interrupted. You're getting cut off. You kind of feel like that resistance and then like the the denial not being accepted. And especially because like, A, you're going to reference the title of the EP, but then also wake up and it's over. Is it about like a, a dark fantasy or a dream that is in reality a nightmare? It's making me really interested in what the other songs are going to be like. Oh, uh, now it makes this... <laughs> <laughs> the title of this song is kind of unnerving after <laughs> after Blank Slate. Okay, next is Call Me What You Like, the official video. I never was a fan of the internet. Damn. Um, is everything okay? I mean, good for you for getting a airplane set. Think that I'm the only guy she'll see tonight. Oh, buddy. And you could kiss the skin. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, it doesn't need to go that hard when we fall down this hole. Um, let's get, let's get Wilbur out of here. Um, um, those are for emergencies only. Like, it's funny, it, it just rocks though. Yeah, you need to be a priority despite your insecurity. Um, no, please be nice to the staff. Please be nice to the staff. No, no, I, uh, I'm glad you're talking about it. Oh my God, I love how overwhelming this is. I'm not paranoid, I'm a realist. <laughs> Me. Oh, no, you're gonna ah, <laughs> oh God. That's so unnerving. Like, holy shit, I love it. Yeah, no, you sleep, hydrate. Yeah, help, help him, help him talk himself down. I loved that. Like in the most like morbid way, I loved that. Again, there's something about like exploring paranoia, toxic or intrusive thoughts, letting that, that just, that gunk that like, like I was getting sweaty, I was getting stressed, I was getting anxious. And then like the way visually through the music video, like the wave of the thoughts were just like, hit him and get into his face and like trying to stare down the the wind effect. It's unhealthy. It's like, dude, you need to go to sleep. You need to take care of yourself. The fact that you're not paying attention to like all like the disastrous situation that you're putting yourself in, like it's just, it's 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 the, the intrusive thoughts. It's a great lyric, but that justification of like, I'm not paranoid, I'm a realist. It's like, yeah, I guess bad things could feasibly happen. That sounds like trauma, my guy. Like talk to somebody. Like again, it's such a, it's like this combination of like, what are you doing to yourself? And like, I wish I could help. Again, resources in the description. Like I, I understand that I can't help other people. And it, it's like acknowledging that through the music. Like this isn't a, yeah, let's have intrusive thoughts. It's, oh God, oh God, it's spiraling. The plane is crashing. And again, taking it from such a different angle, like it's still unhealthy, it's still unhinged, and that that rock sound inviting you to like engage with this like distaste for these thoughts. Like, why do I do this to myself? Why does my brain work like this? Like, why am I setting myself up to stay up all night and imagine all these awful worst case scenarios? Codependent esque, codependent infused. Call me anything you like. Like you're you're giving up your agency. You're giving in to these intrusive thoughts, and the plane is crashing. The <laughs> the ship is sinking. All I want to do is, is help when I see somebody in, in duress. And that's all that maybe want to do is go, Hey buddy, like let's, let's get some juice. Let's get some food in you, some water. <laughs> like, does that, 
does that make sense? There's something so unnerving about like just not using a lot of vibrant colors and then that like pink that flooded most of the screen. Like it's just, it's not fun. Like that's not a healthy resolve. It's, it's kind of like, I'm scared for this person, the POV of this song, right? I don't ever want to assume anything is autobiographical, but like if nothing else observational, musically it just sends you, I, the, the chorus would just kick in. It just, it feels like you're just being dropped into another layer of hell in the, the mindscape of these awful thoughts, it feels meritless. Find myself in your mom, in your mom's, in your mom's bedroom, fighting with the blinds. It makes me wonder if like you're trying to hang on to like good memories. Like, I don't know where this relationship is heading, how committed you are. I'm scared things are happening when I'm not around. I can't follow you everywhere. I need to go to sleep. I need to work through these thoughts, right? I can't just stay away. I've been to your parents' house or like, you know, we, we have good memories like messing with the, the pink blinds or something, right? Right? And it's on pay-per-view, like replaying it over and over in your mind or trying to find like a stabilizing thought or good memory to hang on to, like something to survive on through that insecurity, taking you through that spiral. By illustrating it in this way, POV really needs to work on himself. Like we need to be in good head spaces before we enter relationships and add another person to our lives, right? If that's what you want. I love how this sounds. God, that was fascinating. <laughs> Terrifying. Lovely. Next, next is the official audio for consequences. That's not it's not a good sign. Uh oh. Yep. Consequences, remorse. What's this? The consequences yep. of my actions now. Bravo, these are great lyrics. And it feels kind of wavy, uh, slurring your words musically. This he taken now. What's this? The consequences. Oh, dude, were you getting like bored? The relationship was losing some spice for a while and you did a bad? I love the ownership of it too. That is such an interesting combination of like repetition makes me think repetitive cycle, especially towards the end there. It felt almost like sarcastic, like you'll acknowledge you did something wrong, but you're not ready to like completely acknowledge it. Something failed in the relationship, right? Or, well, you failed the relationship. You're talking about a relationship in beige walls and then, hey, is this seat taken? Like, I don't think we're, I don't think we're LARPing here. <laughs> I think, I think the POV like, started to feel mundane, it's losing its spark, the relationship's starting to feel like there'll be lulls, uh, real life, things like that, and then just kind of finding another source of a relationship, regretting it, missing the person that you hurt or that you distance yourself from. Again, with this idea of wake up, it's like now it feels like wake up, I want this to be a dream, I want to have not done this, given the theme I'm sensing from the EP. I love the sense of remorse and dread and embarrassment over your actions, but then also kind of, again, owning up to to the, the flaws of your POV in these songs, especially the way that it sounds musically at the end there. And sometimes, like I said, it kind of slides or has this kind of wavy texture to it musically that feels like, you know, the lyrics talk about it too. It feels like someone admitting it when they're in a certain state of mind, let's say. I wish I tried more, I wish I tried. Like the, coming to that realization, but like still, still feels like you're doomed to one day repeat this if you don't come to terms with the reality of what happened. It's interesting to go from, again, self-fulfilling prophecy in the previous track. I love the irony of what if something happens and you're with someone else and then you doing it. I don't know if the intention is to like connect all these through a through line, but I like that placement in the EP. I love that. I like how it's like a, a character just on the cusp of admitting again, instead of I wish I tried more, I wish I tried. It kind of devolves to that. Like, I just, I love how dizzying it is. It's so cool, theoretically. Um, and I don't want to make assumptions about real people. I love this. Warsaw. I'm familiar with that word, I think. Next is Warsaw. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying not to swear, but fuck, I love that. She's broken up with him inside her head. Don't love that. Is this connected? It's crazy we used to do this sober. You wait. Damn. Please just let me go. Yeah. I mean, yay vaccination clinics. You're too straight, I should get it. 
Damn. That makes me wonder if now this whole thing is the fantasy of the first song. I'll get into it later. Just please, just let me go. Yeah, I get no one wants to be the bad guy, but like... You're playing relationship chicken is what you're doing. Wait, go back to singing. Are you breaking up right now while I'm here? <laughs> she hopes to God that I just chose. She Shit. That I just chose. Yeah, sometimes mom and dad shouldn't stay together. I'm gonna be a little biased. I'm a child of multiple divorces. So when I objectively just say, end the relationship, you're both miserable. That's really easy for me, given how I was raised and how I grew up. So I, I understand that we're all different people, but damn, it's the, the you're too straight edge to get it. Yeah, you're too straight edge to, I nailed it. I'm the number one love choice, Dan. I'm wondering if the port, if this is portrait of a blank slate, if you actually dated, if there isn't anything between you. Like now it's just a, a loveless, unfulfilled relationship and you're just kind of stuck in a rut. That's just me. It doesn't have to be, but like, you see how that can kind of connect like the obsession, paranoid thoughts, the remorse from the actions that you made, the consequences of what you've done. Like if you're playing this fantasy all out in your head and this is the reality hitting it, the other person would be unfulfilled and unhappy too. Wishing that you would die because it's easier than breaking up with you. Like, I still love that theme if these are all disconnected, but I kind of like creating that through line there, bridging that for myself. This is what my brain does sometimes. I liked how harsh the opening is now after getting to hear the full song. God, that opening was so nice. I loved how sharp and hard it, it was, especially on the percussion. It's like moving through mud. The apathy that's illustrated lyrically as well as musically, it'd be just easier if something ineffable happened and it's it's relationship chicken. It's just gonna keep making both of you miserable. Like they're they're really good at illustrating like such a awful place for the characters of, this, of these songs to be in. It's an impressive skill. You know, again, after having a song about someone so in their head and getting in their own way and building up these awful what if scenarios and I'm not paranoid, I'm a, re I'm a realist. And then boom, both of you just kind of being wrapped up in your own head, being too apathetic to end things. I love the way you illustrate misery. And that's such an awful, such an awful compliment. I feel like it's so effective. It's crazy. We used to do this sober, like rude, get your things and leave. Easier said than done as an observer, if it relationships, but still. But I, I appreciate that. This this will be difficult and illustrating how difficult that can be. That's very human and very understandable, but you want them to just like call it quits, get your stuff and go. When's the lease over? Like I want them to break up just so we can get a glimmer of happiness in here. Delusional, it's not even delusional. And that's what makes it so interesting. It's they're not in denial over the relationship being miserable. They're just so apathetic to it that it becomes its own nightmarish fantasy that we could just stay this awful course. Like this isn't happiness. Cool, okay, well, next is scum. My inner child of divorce that I mentioned earlier, divorce is, is panicking. Next is scum. The fear of reach the end before I've reached a Ugh, the woo sound really nice. That lyric is so good and upsetting. I'm scum, I'm waste. No, I, oh, buddy. So did the breakup happen? Maybe he'll be Jesus this time. Uh Damn, that was gorgeous. But then this, like holy crap, what a great and upsetting hook. Oh no. It doesn't feel like we're pulling ourselves out of this thought. I love those woos, cause like, it's like happiness being ignored. I loved that lyric. That last moment really kind of summed it up for me. It kind of feels like the embodiment of not loving yourself prevents you from fully embracing the love of others. You're staying with me because it's Stockholm that you're stuck on, like Stockholm Syndrome. Maybe he'll be Jesus, maybe he'll be Jesus this time, like maybe he'll save me. Regardless of how the other person feels, if you don't value yourself, there's something blocking accepting love from someone else. Like they long to be free, but all I could see was horizon, that claustrophobic horizon. When you see a horizon, it's, it's endless, it's wide possibilities, but calling it claustrophobic, you couldn't 
see it that way. You couldn't feel that way. You just stayed on this singular track, this small portion of it, and it was claustrophobic. Your scope is so limited. I think it comes from a place of a lack of self-worth, a different type of delusion. Instead of, oh, what if you're out doing something with someone else and I'm about to get wrecked emotionally? Now it's, I don't deserve this, not loving yourself, preventing you from acknowledging the love around you. And I, I, I just admire exploring that. You can even feel it. The POV is kind of blocked away from those woos in the back, a claustrophobic horizon. There's positivity, there's fun, there's joy around, but just staying here in this little box of, no, I'm putting myself here, or I, I mentally can't leave this box, right? Not understanding why someone could value or care for you because you're not giving that value and care to yourself. I appreciate talking about that concept. My energy just like sank. It's devastating, but it's so important to talk about. And it sounded gorgeous. And again, it's like the distant positivity and uplifting elements that start to show up musically, but like they're still so divided or pushed away from the lyrics. It's the guitar solo. It's the woo underneath everything that's just like mixed a little quieter is genius. All right. Thank you. I also appreciate that this music video for It's Golden Hour Somewhere has a trigger warning. So I'll put a I'll put a time skip here if you just want to skip to me talking about the song after the fact or skip to my final thoughts. Thank you for the for the heads up. And uh, this is the official video for It's Golden Hour Somewhere. Resources in the description. No, I liked your hat. Oh, I'm not having fun, <laughs> but I appreciate the, the warning. I almost didn't see it. Is this what you needed? Is this what it's worth? Um, no, 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 no. Are you wishing you had helped or could help somebody? Oh, the bass line's so good. Damn. It's worse when you can't pay. Oh, shit. Holy fuck, there will be signs. All I'm not doing okay. <laughs> fuck. I can't. I, why, I, I just thank you for the warning. <laughs> I was able to kind of prepare for that a little bit mentally. Sorry, now I'm now I'm in my headspace of like, oh, like Bill's not crying enough or whatever, and that's not a healthy way to to do this. I don't know. I'm I'm not. I'm gonna look at the lyrics. I'm a little a little head cloudy right now. I wish that I could kiss the pixels off your lips. Describe our naked bodies over Zoom call partnerships. Is this a virtual relationship or someone you wish you were like in person with? They'll tell you this is normal. Tell you this is love. I'm not sure if. The stuff I want is even worth the price it costs. They'll sell you the rope by which you'll, yeah. I really resent that I have to be careful YouTube rules and stuff, so I'm gonna try to be careful without sugarcoating it. That just sent me to like a really heavy place. Like, like this idea of like capitalism will make money off of you whether you're happy or not. We sell ourselves socially on like material possessions making you happy, and then when they don't, and they'll capitalize on that too. You still have to buy the the rope. And I, I think it plays out in the visuals a little bit too. Costuming, fishing by the, the river, the creek, um, like almost like regretting, like pursuing monetary or the, the physical things version of success, like finding this and then realizing that it doesn't make you happy. Your unhappiness will still contribute to someone else's financial success. And that person probably isn't happy either. I think there's also something about somebody stopping them and taking them with you fishing and like hanging out. There was something about the visual storytelling that made me think of like how unrealistic it might be to be able to like help everybody or solve all the problems of the world. And the lyrics talking about staring at the cycle of unhappiness. Again, links in the description. Fuck, I have no energy now. But it was, it was seeing stopping of it by like throwing something and wishing you could do something I'm typing in golden hour. The period of daytime shortly after sunrise or before sunset, during which daylight is redder and softer. Yeah, it's it's a new day somewhere. I just really wasn't prepared for that. Um, The golden hour is somewhere. I hope there isn't a second connotation to that phrase, but maybe the idea is like the sun, the sun is always rising somewhere, like like hope. 
we made it to a new day somewhere in the world that is tomorrow. Given how everything's been feeling, right? Uh, wake up and it's over. Maybe it is talking about like the fantasy of like things being okay or things feeling better. Like that really messed with me. But I think I think it is that drag down of the themes, but then also putting in the themes of trying to like be hopeful and lift you up. I think it just puts me in this strange gray middle that I'm not crazy comfortable in. Is it metatextual? Is this why you need is this why you need me to break what you can't chew? Maybe it is trying to balance hope with a grim reality. I'm not sure. What a way to end the EP. The final thought, it, it kind of increases the intensity for me a little bit. A, a lot of it. Maybe it is just about helping each other through it and not acting like these things aren't happening. Like, I wish I was in a headspace right now where that feels positive and hopeful and encouraging as opposed to just, you can't help everybody. And maybe that's because that's something I struggle with right now. And trying to make the best while maneuvering through those realizations, maybe. Wherever they film this is very beautiful. It makes me wonder if the idea is like trying to make the most of it despite these realities and not wanting to downplay what you're going through, but wishing that you could help people or hoping that you're helping people. It sounded nice, but it just, it terrified me. This isn't how I want to end my video. <laughs> and again, like now I'm in my head going like, I didn't cry enough. It's like, well, to be fair, I was also warned and I appreciate being warned. I'd rather be warned than be wrecked. Just like when I'm enjoying the song, talking about something serious, I appreciate talking about something serious and taking those things seriously. And again, there's resources in the description of all my videos and streams on both my channels. Uh, I'm not an expert, but I feel like it's, it's the least I can do while grappling my own feeling of wishing I could be there for everyone, help everyone, have all the answers. And that's not possible. So I feel like it's a do the best you can with what you have while also having an ire for uh, society and how capitalism works and all those things. I don't know if it, it's supposed to go that deep, but it feels like it. I was having a lot of fun breaking this down until the last one. I really enjoyed this EP. I really enjoy the complex feelings all their songs have given, but this one especially. Again, to me, it feels like it's the fantasies we conjure, whether it's paranoia or wishing we could be everyone's hero, complacency or or the fallacy of not being worthy of love or the fallacy of paranoia and anticipated betrayal. I, I think that's kind of part of it is there, there's there's a, a darkness around all these feelings and embracing that darkness as opposed to, you know, we're just cogs in the product machine of, of corporate capitalism. Like and subscribe. I really appreciate going further into this insight. And I'd love to know what you guys think. If there's a positive takeaway from It's Golden Hour somewhere or any of the other songs I talked about, things you agree with, things you noticed that I didn't. If you want more music, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, ring the bell, check the settings, blah, 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 YouTube words. Uh, links to my other stuff is in the description along with a resource card should you or someone you know need them. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Lovejoy's Wake Up and It's Over. Hope everyone's staying safe. Hope to see you next time I upload or go live. Uh, wear a mask if you go out. Be mindful of others. And remember to take care of yourselves, please.